Just shake their hands. I know the maker of the wind. Dark skies overhead. I remember what you said that you would never leave. Here I am on solid ground as you reach down to me. If you were on my side. behind me it trips me up and makes me fall when i'm broken then you remind me that you have overcome it all if you were on my side whom shall Everybody i now, be come on, let's sing it.
Churches, groups of believers from small to much larger than us are gathering, and, and many of us are gathering for one cause, for today is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. We've come in liberty, we've come in comfort, we've come in ease, but my friend, it's not that way for everybody. It's just not that way. Some will literally give their lives today for doing what we've done in freedom today. So what we wanted to do today was show a clip from a, a pastor there, a Hindu pastor uh, that was part of a, uh, not a Hindu pastor, but a pastor in a Hindu village. i got to just get in your attention. In, in India. And anyway, share some of his story to help us to understand a little bit about what God's people are doing in difficult situations. So they'll play this and you follow along. Today we are celebrating the engagement of a young couple in our village. That is until this Christian returned. Four days ago he came into our village trying to convert us, telling everyone about his Jesus. We warned him not to come back, yet here he is. <laughs> कई बार मना किया हमने कि प्रभु यीशु का प्रचार हमारे गांव में ना करें लेकिन वो मना करने के बाद भी नहीं माना और हमने उसको बहुत मार दिया यह हमें नहीं मालूम हो रहा है कि वो जीवित है या कि मर चुका है तो आप जाइए उसको देखिए उठिए ना उठिए जाइए आप आप ऐसा काम क्यों किया है
हम लोग इनके साथ क्या करेंगे अगर इसका परमेश्वर सच्चा है तो इसकी मदद अवश्य करेगा और हम इसे जाने देंगे Suta did recover and 4 days after leaving our village he came back again Now my wife and I follow Jesus and Suta is our pastor When you pray for the persecuted please remember to also pray for those who persecute For us it may be the only way we will see the love of God Now I ask you to give something of greater value than money and that's our prayers. Think for a minute if that was your child in harm's way serving Jesus. Your spouse in harm's way. Wouldn't you want somebody somewhere praying for them? Join me if you would. Father, we come, Lord, and it's quite humbling. Whenever I see the ease in which we serve you, each one of us as your ministers called every one of us to our place of service, and and Lord, I see the ease in which we serve, and I see the things that are so fickle, Lord, that we make much ado over in church life, oh Lord, and and then I watch like Pastor Suda, who literally lays down his life that others might find life. So Father, I pray for those just like he in many different places, places we don't know and names that we don't know, even can't even pronounce, Lord. But Lord, you see where they are, and Lord, know that there's a people here at Calvary Church crying out on their behalf, Lord. We pray in ignorance of so much, Lord. I thank you for voice of the martyrs, the martyrs that that helps us to to know that gives voices and names to those that are that are ministering. But Lord, help us to become more faithful. and doing our part to help them by praying. But Lord, I not only pray for those that are serving you, but those that are opposing you. You said to pray for our enemies, O oh Lord, and so we do today to bless them that curse us and so we do today. Lord, even in doing the works of evil, not knowing who was leading their life, O oh Father, I pray that the fruit of that evil might lead them to a revelation of who you are and the depths of their sinfulness. and the need for a savior. So Father move in all parts of the world. But Lord also move in this part right here in this congregation that we would do our part in supporting and sending and going to all parts of the world. In Jesus name. Amen. We got a brand new song this morning. talks about being politically correct I think Christians have been too politically correct for way too long Anybody agree with that and I do I really do uh, Jim's touched on it uh, Thursday night I do think we get complacent about what God has really saved us from You know we get to sit back relax and just like and then we start find in things what's wrong with others less the grace of God through his shed blood on Calvary's cross any of us are saved any of us I want you to listen to this song I saw a picture of a man upon a cross hanging in a second hand store I heard some people say such a cruel scene shouldn't display it anymore what they fail to see is what it means to me i see a savior i see a redeemer i see a sinless man time to set me free i see They don't 
don't understand the reason he died on that tree. What may look like the darkest of days is glorious victory. Oh, only the heart can see the freedom of Calvary. Cause I see a Savior. Cause I see you say Thankful we got a friend called Jesus. Amen. Well, what a friend we have in
Dear Lord, we come to you this morning. We want you to know that you are our friend and you walk with us daily. But let us never forget that you are our Savior. You redeemed us daily in your grace and your mercy. Thank you for being with us and walking with us daily. We love you and we praise you. In your name we pray. Everybody said amen. I love hearing you all say amen. Everybody said amen. Sound like we're at the First Baptist Church. We've got to quit that. Can everybody say hallelujah. Come on, assemblies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, I want to really stretch you. Miss Danae is not here today, and she says sometimes I stretch you. Put your hand up real high. I'm going to give you a million dollars. Boy, they got higher. There's somebody that wants to give you more than that. More than you can ever imagine. More, more, more. If we'll just surrender to Him and keep Him in our life. Amen. I love this song. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will live love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all I surrender all All to Thee, my blessed Savior I surrender all All to Jesus I surrender We got a lot of people right here that want to give you their life. Take it, make it new. All to Jesus, I surrender. Baby, Savior, holy life. Fill me with thy love and power. Truly know that. Sing every verse in there, believe it or not. All to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let the blessings fall on.
better way to start a service than surrendered. Amen. See, so many churches do it opposite. They have the surrender part after the message. I think surrender before. I think the life of believers says, Lord, we surrender, now speak. Does that make sense? Instead of, we'll speak, Lord, and we'll think about it, and maybe we will and maybe we won't. No, Lord, we surrender, now speak. Let me share a few things. Going on this Friday night, there will be a movie here, and it's great. Saturday? Well, if you want a preview on Friday, come and uh do you see why they don't let me make announcements i can't believe you trusted me with it mike it to start with anyway it's going to be this saturday you can't miss it uh, a great time that's for all of our people or not our people if you just want to come the doors open at 6 30 the movie starts at 7 free popcorn free sodas free other stuff you you just come and enjoy yourselves and as you do it'll be a time to to minister it's and for uh, young couples there's child care amen we don't care if you come and leave them and skip out and come back in an hour. I'm, I won't tell. Uh, sometimes you just need a break. But anyway, you hear what I'm trying to say. That's this Saturday night, not Friday. And uh, you'll want to come take a good movie to boot in addition to that. There's information in the bulletin, information on the, on the booths and all those wonderful places. I guess you heard the story about a, an old farmer that had a young nephew that just graduated from college. He had earned five degrees, and he came and just exhausted from all his studies. So he came to his uncle's house and said, boy, I would love to go camping with you. So indeed they did. And so they caught, set on a fire out, and there they sat around the fire and told stories and do all the wonderful things you do when you're camping. And finally they turned in underneath this big old tent. They, they, they went to sleep. And about 2 in the morning, the old farmer woke up his younger nephew and said, well, see those stars? And the nephew said, well, well, yeah. He said, what do you think? He said, well, scientifically, and he started naming off all the stars and the conglomerations of stars and had names for all of them. But mathematically, well, this area right here, if you multiplied that by blah, 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 it had this many thousands, millions, trillions, I don't know, stars. And theologically, God created all this just by speaking it into existence. Uncle, what do you think? I think somebody stole the tent. Oh, you got to work on it. Do I need to do that again? I thought, yeah, I, when I heard it, I, I got a lot better of applause out of that. Let me continue. Last week we were blessed to have the Brants with us and so part, glad that they're a part of our congregation. We're a part of their ministry. Where they go, we go with them and, and proud of what we do in that regard. But a week before that, I had done a message on dreams, on we need to be a people that are led of dreams and guided by the dreams that God has for us. Matter of fact, the book of Proverbs says where there is no dream, the people perish. Where there is no dream, you perish. If you've not discovered what your dream is for God, God's dream is for you in your life and God's purpose in your life, you're going to find that your life, instead of thriving, it'll, it'll start dying little by little and, and just weighing down and, and not going forward. And what's interesting, after I spoke that message, and, and I spoke several things about that, I'm discovering their dream, the fact that, that first of all, if we want to discover our dream, that we need to get alone. There's so many voices shouting at us and getting our attention that oftentimes, but even if God wanted to speak, that we don't hear him because of all that, uh, they, that they are saying. We need to get alone. And secondly, we need to wait. We just need to realize that God doesn't just cast his pearls before swine, that, that we need to come and humble ourselves and spiritually speak and say, Lord, I need to hear from you. God, I want to know what you want me to do. I want to know what your vision is for my life, your dream, your plan, your purpose for my life. And so, so we get alone and, and we wait. And we get alone and we wait. And instead of listening to the world's voice and the world's words and the world's ways, we open up the Word of God. There's no greater way to discover the will of God for your life than the Word of God. As a matter of fact, God will never show a dream for your life that's God-honoring that violates the Word of God. And the way that God most often speaks to the people of God will be from the Word of God. And so if you really want to find what your purpose is and God, God's purpose is for you in this life, you need to be a people that come and, and open up your yourself and wait on him before the word of God and then as he starts to reveal some of what he has purposed your life for some of the dream for his life for your life is then start focusing on it and walking forward as he shows you how and as he shows you where but this morning I've not come so much to talk about 
discovering your vision, your dream, your purpose, whatever term you want to use, my friend, that God has for you. But today I want to come and, and talk about rediscovering, resurrendering, if you would, to the vision that God has for your life. So many people stop me through the week and say, well, Jim, I, I don't have a purpose. Oh, yes, you have a purpose. God did not create you by accident. He created you on purpose for a purpose. He has a purpose for you. And what he has revealed to you, you need to keep it afresh. You need to keep it alive. But I've got a feeling that today in the congregation this size that there will be many that if we could sit and talk face to face, one on one, heart to heart, that you said, Jim, I, I know I've got a real sense of what my purpose is, but Jim, I just don't think I can pursue it anymore. Jim, it is it costing me too much. It's taught too hard. I never dreamt it would be this hard. And I, I'm just ready to throw in the towel. I'm ready to call it quits. I'm ready just to do my thing and let God do his thing and heaven's my home, but I'm done with this stuff. Might be in your marriage. Might be in your job. Might be your assignment here in church. Might be in your neighborhood. I'm done. Today. The God of all creation. Not only honors you. With his presence. But today. He's saying don't quit. And that in a nutshell. Is what this message from him. Is about in the book of Galatians. It says it like this. Let us not become weary in doing good. Let us not become weary in following God's dream for our life and following God's vision for our life and following God's plan for our life. Don't become weary. I don't care in what aspect of your life his vision is talking about. Don't become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not faint. Woo. If you just don't quit. I know what it's like to want to quit. Every other believer knows what it's like to want to quit. But God the Holy Spirit is here today. He led Paul to pen these world words thousands of years ago. He has preserved them from generation to generation and culture to culture. And he's delivering them a fresh and a new, but like a fresh out of the box just for you. He's saying, don't quit. Don't you dare quit. Because I've got good in store for you. If you don't quit. Can I share three things? Maybe two. I got, I got it done in two at Gravel Hill, but they're pretty sharp. You'll have to see how you do today. <laughs> Can I share a few things? I'll put it that way. That I think that will be used by God the Holy Spirit to help us live out the purpose he has for our life in this very day not to quit, but like we just sang, all to Jesus, surrender a fresh and anew, embrace and enjoy the dream God has for our life. Number one, we need to realize whenever God reveals a part of His purpose, a part of His dream for our life, that the fulfillment of that, the conception of it might be quick, and He knew that from before the beginning of time before you were created. He knew why you were going to be created. But I mean to tell you, the unveiling and the unwrapping and the discovery and the experience of that is not that quick. We need to recognize and value that the dream process, the purpose process, the call of our life process, however you want to say it, that it's a process my friend it doesn't just happen he tells us tonight and in the morning we know it all unfolded it doesn't happen in the Old Testament times in the New Testament believers none of those do we see it all unfolding all at one blink of an eye it's a process my friend it says at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not quit interesting in the book of Ecclesians it says it like this there's a time for everything in a season for every activity under heaven it takes time 
for a dream to come to fulfillment. It takes time for a vision to become reality. I love this in Habakkuk. I shared some a couple of weeks ago from this book of Habakkuk. Let me share again from another verse in that same chapter. It says this, Paul, God speaking, he says, These plans I have won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the, dream, when the vision will be fulfilled. It won't happen right away, but slowly and steadily, and God's promise, and surely it's going to be revealed. God has a plan for you, my friend. He's got a plan for ever the least of you to the greatest of you, male and female, child and adult. It makes no difference. God has a plan for you. Don't you want to find that plan and walk in that plan and, and see what the creator of this earth created you for? Woo, I mean, life's too dull to miss what's good in him. Him minus him, it's just about as fading and depleting as you can find a life. But whenever God created you, he goes, I'm going to make one just like you. It's kind of funny when you look in the mirror. I know. I'm down here looking up. I'm going to make one just like you. Not going to make another one anything like you. They can be your twin and not be just like you. Are you with me? And I'm going to use you to do something nobody else can do. I've got a plan. I've got a dream. Martin Luther wasn't the first one who had a dream. <laughs> He's got a dream for you. Oh, my friend, and steadily and surely, God will make that vision be fulfilled. If, if it seems slow, he says, do not despair. For these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. God's plan for you. So number one is the fact that God's plan for us, his vision and purpose for us, my friend, it's a process of unfolding. I don't think it ever totally unfolds so we cross from this world to the other, but he's a revelatory God. He keeps revealing more and more and more and more of what he's created for us to be and what he's created us to do. You know, it's just like a parent. Whenever our children are born, we've got plans and visions for them, do we not? Uh, I remember our, our oldest daughter is Jenny, and I don't think she's here today. So if she's not, I'll pick on her. Or Katie, I, you're off the hook. You're here. Uh, I learned not to do it while they're present. But boy, if they don't come to church, I'll nail them. Uh, but anyway, the privilege of being a pastor, a little leverage. But we really thought it would be neat that someday Jenny could ride a bicycle well. So when she was two years old, we bought her this 10-speed bike. We were still living there in, in Fort Worth. And, I mean, they had flat streets down there. And we put her on that bike and pushed her off. And she was shifting gears. And, I mean, no, we didn't do that. <laughs> See, we had a dream of seeing her someday riding that bike. But, but we bought her a tricycle first. That's what we bought her in, in Fort Worth. We bought her a tricycle. And while she went through that process for a little while, we got her one of these little bitty bikes. This is kind of neat. It had a, hand, a little bar in the middle that could either be for a boy or for a girl. We, we chose the girl part. Had the girl and had little training wheels, and, and we just let her go. And it wasn't long in that process that we took those training wheels off. Our kid is bright and athletic like their dad. And anyway, she's bright. Uh, but. But we took the training wheels off because we knew if she fell that she wouldn't fall far, she wouldn't kill herself and because it was a little bike. And as time went on, she got a neck side. And you know what one day? You guessed it, steadily and surely, she was riding at 10 speed. Now, my friends, if that's how we process the dreams for our children, foolish as we sometimes might be, how much more will the all-wise one deal with us? Some of you right now, you're in a holding pattern. It, it seemed like you've sensed where God was leading. You walked there, and there was confirmation, and there was fruit there. But it seemed like now you, you're too far from that shore to go back there, too far from the other shore to go there. And so you're just kind of treading water. Oh, my friend, don't give up. You're in a process. And God knows what the process is, is all about. I mean, look at all the saints of old. Look, look at Abraham. I mean, he told him that he was going to be the father of a many nation. And so he was obedient. He left the homeland that he was of. And he went to a city that he knew not. And he went off into that city to be that father of that many nations. And 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 
70 years, no child of his and Sarah's. But my friend, while God was preparing for them to have a child, he had to prepare the father of that child to be the father of a nation. Are you with me? There was old Moses saved him there from being killed as a male child less than two years old. Saved him there. Raised him in, the, in all the knowledge and all the wisdom and all the ways of the Egyptian people. And Moses looked at the Israelite people being abused and took the life of one that was abusing one. So for the next 40 years, too far from that shore, didn't look like he was ever going to go to the shore of the purpose he was created for. He was on the backside of the mountain. But God was in a process of building up a leader on the backside of the mountain. If you're here today and you say, Jim, it just doesn't seem like I'm going anywhere. My friend, you're in the process. I think sometimes it's kind of like I'm sick. I don't mind if I know what I'm sick with. Now, my brother, I had this little deal and uh, Katie had it first I think it came from her and, and then I got it the next day and my brother got it yesterday and so he called and said hey did you feel like this and this and this and yep so how long did it last well about this long once he knew what he had it wasn't going to kill him and kind of how long the process was going to be he was fine he wasn't better but he was fine mentally my friend if you're here today it seems like God has forgotten you and forsaken you and taken you out of the journey that he seemed to have called you on. My friend, it's just in a holding pattern of the process. It might not have anything to do with you. It might have everything to do with somebody else that's going to be in your path for the next step of you fulfilling the dream that he has for you. We need to recognize this as a process. Number two, we need to value that process. You see, whenever... We are put in this situation. God's not just killing time. He goes, well, I'm going to put them on the shelf, and I'll pick them back up, oh, five years, two months, six months, seven years, nine years, whatever it might be. Oh, no, not our God. He never wastes a moment. He never wastes an opportunity. Not only does he have you in a process, but there is great value that he's doing for you while you're in the midst of this. Listen to First Peter. It says, so be truly glad. Now, now Peter's talking about tribulation here. Isn't that something? Isn't that a great thing, a crazy thing to say about tribulation? He says, be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Not for the tribulation, my friend. Not for the trouble, my friend. Not for the evil being dealt for you, my friend. God's not the deliverer of that stuff, but God's the one that will take what, that, what Satan's doing against you and make something good from it. He says no matter what you're in, there's good coming at the end, that there's wonderful joy ahead for you, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. Oh, my friend, I'm here to tell you that many trials are promised you. So, well, Jim, that's not very positive preaching. We like more of that positive stuff. Okay, I'm positive there's many trials coming for you, okay? I mean, it's just going to happen. But here's what, here's what he promises. Not only that you're going to have a bunch of trials ahead of this wonderful joy that's coming to you, but it's only going to be a little while. Now think of our life story. How many of us have been in a jam? Amen? Whether it's other people's making, our making, it doesn't make any difference, but we've been in a jam. How many in the midst of that jam have come and said, Man, Lord, this is never going to end. And some smart elk will come along beside you and say, this won't last too long. You're going to get through this. You're going to be all right. Makes you want to smack them in the name of Jesus. I mean, you know, what, what are they thinking? It seems like forever. But how many, now that we've gone through those jams, look back and they were almost like the twinkling of an eye in retrospect. My friend, if you're here today, don't give up. If you're here today and you're thinking this will never end, do not quit. Joy is awaiting you. You're going through what every believer goes through, many trials. You'll have these and you will get through them. There will be more to come, but you will get through them because they've got value in your life. And let me share with you what God says that value is. It says, for these trials will show that your faith is genuine. 
You see, the trials are going to be used by God, and it's all about the faith. Oh, Satan's looking up up there, and he looks down, and he says, well, Pat, she can't stand that kind of trial. She can't. You'll never sit up here again. She can't go through that kind of stuff. And so he starts putting Pat through all those trials, and he's telling Satan, uh, Satan's telling God, oh, she'll never uphold to that. No, God knows better. He knows what she's really made of in the faith world, in the spiritual realm. He knew, knows the Christ that lives within her heart, that she can do all things through him. And he knows that without faith, she'll never be pleasing unto him. So he's going to use this to grow up her faith. My friend, it's a test. It's a test. Every trial is a test. Every storm is a time that we can be schooled by him. Every evil is an experience that God can use for us. But what's he going to do with our faith that he's testing? It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold through your faith, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. Now, I've never had a lot of gold. I don't even know if I have any gold. But those that do, they say that they'll take gold and they'll put it in the fire. And as they raise the fire, the more fire that they have, the more of those infirm infirmities that are in the fire, they come to the top and they, and they skim it all off and they, they skim those impurities out of that gold. And the more of those impurities that are, that are skimmed out, the greater value that it has. The, the more fire that it is, the greater impurities that show up, my friend. God is wanting to clean up your faith. Amen. God's wanting you to lay down some things that aren't going to work and hold on to Him that is going to work. You and I both know that it had not been many a time had it not been for the fire we would have not quit trusting in ourselves in areas of our life but we've been in the midst of those jams where we could not do it we could not figure it out we weren't smart enough we weren't strong enough we weren't anything enough and finally we all to Jesus surrendered and watched him do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. It says in John chapter 15, it's talking about we are the branches and he is the vine. And, and God comes and he prunes the branches. Does anybody want to be pruned today? I'll pray one of those pruning prayers on you. You know, I and I by both don't want that. But he, he says he prunes the branches so that they will produce much more fruit. Not just more fruit, but much more fruit. God is testing and trying and proving and making your faith of greater value, my friend, whenever we go through these, tire, these times. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus is revealed to the whole world. Number one is, it's a process. We need to realize that and we need to value that. Number two is, Whenever we're following our dreams, we need to be wise enough to realize that not everybody's going to cheer us on. Not everybody's going to go, that a boy, way to go, bub, I'm for you. You bet, sister, you're on the right track, man. You, you got my vote, you got my prayers, you got my help. We need to refuse, no matter whom is coming against us, we need to refuse not to quit. And for most of us, this gets our goal quicker than anything else I know. We can take some of the circumstances that nobody seemingly has anything to do with us, but oh, Tom, Dick, Jane, or Harry show up and flapping their lips and coming against us, my friend. It is tough. I think it's tough. Does anybody think it's tough? Oh, there we go. Hallelujah. You got 25. Good. It's tough. Whenever people come against you, Jesus promised that. Now, now, Jesus, he doesn't try to sugarcoat this stuff. He said to the disciples, he said, it is impossible that no offenses should come to you. My friend, if you're walking on the path with Jesus, if you're following the dream He has laid in your heart, the vision of who you are and what you're to be and what you're to do, you cannot go there apart from others being against you. It's absolutely guaranteed. Dang. <laughs> That's not fun. I know it's not fun. But oh my friend, I'm here to tell you that's what God promised. That there will be Offenses. Sometimes they'll come from family. Sometimes they'll come from friends. Sometimes they'll come from church members and churches. You get to doing something right, and not everybody's going to be on your team anymore. 
Jesus promised if they persecuted him, he promised if we're following him, they will persecute us. We're just so tired of all the drama, tired of all the tongue wagging and the gossip and the slander and the dark shooting. If you're tired of that and wanting to quit, my friend, don't quit. Do not quit. Are they your Lord or is He your Lord? Amen. Do you want those people to really rule your life? To guide your life? That's what I do a lot of times. I think, well, Lord, I don't want them to be Lord of my life. I think I'll just take you. Wish you'd do a little better about them, but I think I'll just take you. Interesting what, what Joseph, uh, remember Joseph the dreamer? Joseph the favorite of his father. He had uh, ten brothers and, and I mean, he got a dream. I mean, he got a dream, and he dreamed that there were uh, 11 sheaves of, of wheat, and, and they were all there, and he st was stood up, and all of the other 10 bowed down before him. Now, Joseph wasn't real smart, so he gets this real dream from a real God about God's real purpose for his life, and he went and told his brothers, <laughs> and here's what they had to say. And Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough they already hated him. But they hated him all the more. Then in 50 verse 20, we read that, actually another place in Genesis, it wasn't 50, that these same brothers that hated him all the more threw him in a pit. First they were going to kill him. And I think it's the oldest brother that threw him in a pit. I actually got to thinking. He thought, well, we can kill him and that's nothing in our pockets. We can sell him as a slave and that's something in our pockets. They threw him in a pit. Sold him as a slave. Friends, I, I, I really wish this weren't true. I really wish there was a perfect family where everybody understood when God was leading and followed. But none of us live in that perfect family. I wish there were perfect friendships of those that would see our heart and understand God speaking to our lives and would cheer us on at all costs. But my friend, as good as our friends might be, there, there aren't such a thing as perfect friends. I wish there was a perfect church. Lord, how I wish there was. Y'all are the closest thing to it. I, you know, I, I just kind of, <laughs> all right, I'm running for office anyway. But guys, we're not a perfect church, and others aren't going to be a perfect church. Whenever you start to follow Christ Jesus, all hell so often breaks loose, and so many times it breaks loose from those dearest you. Read the Psalms. I love the Psalms. And one of the things I, reasons I go there so often is the fact that it's David having thousands. It's David having friends. It's David having enemies come against him. And, and I hear him praying. And I take his prayers to be my prayers. I'm trying to tell you, my friend, that if you're following and serving Lord Jesus according to the dream he has for your life, don't be surprised. Matter of fact, expect it. Whenever others come against you it's just the way it's going to be the rule that I try to use I struggle with this I've got enough Irish blood in me that I don't take it well and I'll get in the flesh and come back and try to defend myself and that never ever works love works prayer works flesh doesn't work But what I try to do as best I know how is come before the Father and say, Father, what do you say? What do you say, Father? And as best I know how, if He has given me the nod, that's all I need. Amen? I mean, we can't even figure out where to set the thermostat in this church in agreement. Okay? No, no other church can either. I'm not belittling you. I'm just talking about, I, I watched this Satu, the, the pastor there, and I thought, oh, Lord. Man, the things I gripe about, about serving 
I just need to shut my trap. Mm hmm. Same God with the same call in his life as my call and your call. I, I know I'm just kind of stirring the pot and rolling around here, but I got to because I know this wounds way too many warriors for Jesus. I know too many of the workforce turn in their towel and turn in their badge and never come back to show up for work because of this. I hate that piece of gossip. I hate that people lie. I hate that people talk. I hate that people will belittle you. But my friend, it's not going to change in any area of your life. There's not been ever, not been ever, there's never been anything worthwhile. Even just take this church, every move we've ever made. Do you? I mean, every move we've ever made. I mean, from the very start of this, every move we ever first made. Before you even knew there was going to be a church before it ever happened. People came against it every step of the way. Every step of the way they come and say, well, Jim, you know, this one and that one and that one, boy, they're talking down there. They're talking over there. What are you going to do? I'm going to try to stand by the grace of God. I don't know what else to do. And you take another step and, boy, they come and wagon again. And, and I get to where I kind of expect it. That's kind of my applause from God. The more people that are talking against it, the more I realize that God is in it. I'm, you think I'm laughing, but I'm speaking your truth. You, you, you just get on this trail for a little bit. You get on this trail for a little bit. Mm -hmm. My job is easy and it's the toughest job I ever had all rolled up in one. And so is yours, my friend. No matter where you're serving, if you don't have anything or anybody coming against you, you're not walking the path of my Jesus. He said that do not think offenses will not come against you. He promised they would. The godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. But after saying all of that, I've come to realize that even in that, that Jesus speaks. Even in that, it causes me to examine, causes you to examine our lives and see where we've come up short and what God is calling us to. Even in that, great things happen. Let me, I might close in this one. Yeah, I better close. All right, hang on. Woo. You hang in there. Will you hang in with me? Yeah. Don't shut God off. You don't shut me off. You've not lost anything, but don't shut God off. All right, so Joseph, finally his brothers show up. Joseph has gone through the pit. He's gone through the, through the prison. Now he's the second in command of all of Egypt. And one day his Soldiers show up in the midst of a famine needing food. And here's what Joseph says. But as for his brothers, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good woo, to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people. Number one, what I've just been saying is there will be others that bring evil against you every time you take a step of faith. It's not fun. I promise you it's not, but it'll cause you to lean on the Savior that bled for you, that died for you, that was persecuted for you, that was beaten for you. Lean on His chest. Number two is the fact that God will bring good to pass. What they intended for evil, God intended for good, my friend. I mean, for good, my friend. I said, he said, not because I said, but I said, he said, for good, my friend. Do you hear what God's trying to tell you today? Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare quit. I've got a package for you that I'm about to unwrap for you that if you quit today, you'll never get to sit underneath the tree and open up that package. If you just keep on being faithful, if you do not quit in proper time, you're going to reap a great harvest. Do not quit if you don't take anything else away. Whatever it is you're doing that you sense that you know is of the will of God, do not quit. No matter if hail or high water comes against you. H-A-I-L, get that straight. Um, and the other two. But anyway, do not quit. Why? Here's the important part. The why is not about you. The why is not about you. The why is not about you. I will make evil use it for good. I'm 
finding my place to save much people. My friend, that, that's the dream of God for our lives. That's why Satu that we saw a while ago was beaten to a pulp and right near death and he got up and he did it again. It wasn't about him. It was about those that need to be saved, my friend. The changes we make in this church, it's not about you. It's not about me. I'm going to go to somebody's church somewhere. And if you're not that kind of a believer, shame on you. It's about those who have yet to meet our Jesus. It's about the generations yet to come, my friend. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about them. I'd rather preach my old sermons. They were good and easy. I had. But it's about saving them. And if they'll go die, I'll go through anything compared to what they're doing. Mm. Three specific things about a God-honoring dream. Number one, it's, it'll always seem risky. He doesn't ask you to do what you can do. He asks you to let him do what he can do through you. It will seem risky. Number two is, it will require God's involvement for it to be accomplished. You'll have to cry out, go, oh God, I can't do this. He said, I knew you couldn't all along, but God, would you help? He said, I've been waiting for the invitation. It will be risky, and if he doesn't do it, it will not be done. And the third thing is, if it doesn't have the end of changing lives, then it's not God's dream, and, and, and that's where I want to close. So many of you are trying to put together the dream of your life, and you're dreaming for you. And I'm dreaming for me. That's my dreams and your dreams. And that's only fulfilled with my power and your power. Only has the fruit of what I can produce and you can produce. And that isn't much. But every dream that God will place in your path to lead you on purpose along the way, it will be that other people's lives might change for eternity. So my prayer is, my friend, I understand. I'm not throwing fun at you. I understand that you want to quit. But God says, don't quit. I've got joy laid up for you if you don't quit. Amen. Amen. Let me pray. Father, we come now this morning, and Lord, we're so thankful that you're our God. And Father, the neatest thing about you is the fact that you let us join you in God-sized assignments through our lives individually and our lives as a family and our lives as a church and even our life as a nation if we'd so let you. We can come and watch the, the giants be slain, oh Lord. We can come and belong beside you and watch the old rivers be parted, oh God. We can come along beside you and watch the dead rise. We can come along beside you and watch the blind be given sight. We can come and watch the lost be saved. Oh, Lord, and so much more. If we'll just let you show us your dream and your vision and your plan for our lives and never quit following you as we chase that dream. So let us dream on, O oh great Jehovah's. Let us be big dreamers. Let us dream like you've dreamt for us to be our life's purpose. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're dismissed.